the last video, we ended off counting how many notes there were in an octave, and we discovered that there were 12 notes, but only seven letter names. Let's just revise what we were doing so that you can remember. There is a picture of the piano keyboard, and it starts on C in this particular picture. If we count C, D, E, F, G, A, B, we get seven. And if we add the black notes as well, one, two, three, four, five, we get a total of 12 notes, but we only have seven letter names. So what do we do? This is where we come to something called accidentals. Now, it's important to remember that in English, when we speak about something being accidental, it was a mistake. But in music, this isn't the case. An accidental is simply a name that we give to notes that have no particular, not a particular name. So, let's see. How do we name the black notes in between? There are two types or two ways we can name them. We can name them either a sharp, which looks a bit like a hashtag, or we can name them a flat, which looks a bit like a B with a bulge at the top. And it really depends which way you look at it. So if you look at uh, the picture just below, you'll see that if you go one step up from the C to the black note right next to it, we can call it C sharp. So when we go up a half step, when we climb up half a, half a step from the white note to the black note, we usually call that a sharp. Same with the D. If you go D up to the closest black note, it becomes D sharp. Also with the F, if you go from the white note to its nearest black note, you get F sharp and so on and so forth. But if you look at it from the other direction, so let's say you're looking at a D a little bit higher up and you go down half a step to the, the black note closest to it on its left, we can call that D flat. Or from the E down a half step, we can call that E flat and so on. So how do accidentals actually work? It really depends from which direction you are approaching a note. So if you look now at the picture, you'll see that the black note just above C can be either C sharp, if you're coming from the bottom and going up, or D flat, if you're going from the D downwards. One note, the black note in between C and D, can be called C sharp, if you're going up a step from C, or D flat if you're going half a step down from D. Here's something very important. When we're writing or speaking about accidentals, we always place the little symbol, the sharp or the flat, after the note. So F sharp or B flat. And you can see on the, on the um, slide that I've actually written them out for you. But when you write an accidental in musical notation, the symbol actually comes before the note. So look at the slide again, and you'll see that I've written an F sharp. F is the first in the treble clef, is the first space, and you'll see that the little hashtag comes before the note, not after it. Before the note. And I've also written B flat. Remember, if you're remembering the lines, every good boy, B is the third line, and if we put a flat in front of it, it means that is B flat. We don't put it after the note. So this is very important. Many people make a mistake that because we talk about F sharp, not sharp F, that we must put the sharp or the flat after the note. But actually, it comes before. Now, we have a special name for these notes, the black notes in particular, that can have two particular names. Remember just now we said that the black note just next to C could be C sharp, if you're looking at it from the direction of C, or it could be D flat, if you are looking at it from the direction of D. One note has two names. When that happens, we call it enharmonic note, an enharmonic note. So all of the black notes can be enharmonic notes. For example, if you look at the black note just above F, that could be F sharp if you're looking at it from F 
s perspective. But if you're looking at from the G perspective, it could be G flat because it's going down a step from G. It goes up a step from F, but it goes down a step from G. So F sharp is also G flat. When a note has two names like that, it can be called an N harmonic note. So in a test or an exam, if you are asked to provide the N harmonic name for a note, you are looking for that other name uh, which from whichever direction you are coming. Just have a look at uh, the keyboard again because there are two interesting cases about this. Look at E and F. If you look at E and F, you'll see that there's no black note in between them. So if we go up a step from E, E sharp, that's the same as F on its own, isn't it? So how a step up from E is F, or E sharp. If we go the other direction, F down a step is F flat, but F flat is also E. That's what we call an N harmonic note, okay? So even the white notes can have N harmonic names, but mostly it's for the black notes, some like C sharp and D flat, which sh share the same name. How do you draw accidentals? Well, I think sharps are the easiest to draw because you're already familiar with something called the hashtag. And the hashtag is basically what a sharp looks like. Two parallel lines going down and two parallel lines going across. The only thing, and this is very important, that the little box that you create in the si inside the hashtag must go on the exact line or the exact space of the note that you want it to go in front of. So if you are drawing an F sharp in, in the treble clef in that first space, that the box of the hashtag must go exactly in that space, not in the line above and not in the line below. We'll look at a picture of that in a minute. For flats, all you have to draw is a B but the B has to have a slight bulge at the top. So usually a B is quite a round B, but a flat is slightly bulgy. The same applies here for flats as does for sharps. The flat must be in the exact space or line for the note which it is intended for. Let's have a look at some examples. So if you look now at the screen, you'll see that there is a correct way to write the, the note F sharp. This is in the bass cliff, and you'll remember that the bass cliff starts, good boys deserve food. The fourth line is F. We've got a quaver F there, and you'll see that the sharp comes before the note, not after it. Also, you'll see that the box part of the sharp goes directly through the F line. It doesn't go in the space below or the space above, but directly through the line, okay? So look at the two examples just below, which are incorrect. In the first example on the left, you'll see that the sharp is actually in the G space. It's in the space just above the F, okay? In the second one, you'll see that the sharp is after the note instead of before it. So remember that if you're writing any type of sharp, that little hashtag box must be on the line or the space of that exact note, and it must come before the note. Now, how long does an accidental last? If you put an F sharp in front of an F, does it only affect that one note, or does it affect all of the Fs that come after that? And this is an important question to answer. If you look now at the screen, you'll see that I've written a, a short example in three, four time, it starts in the treble clef with an F sharp, okay? The first space in the treble clef is an F for F-A-C-E. And you'll see that it has a sharp in front of it. Then it moves to a G and it comes back down to an F. The important thing here is that the sharp, that first sharp, actually affects all of the sharps after it in the space of one bar. So that next F after the G is also an F sharp. F sharp, G, F sharp. But after that you have the bar line. Once a bar line has come, 
all of the accidentals in the bar before that are now cancelled out. So when you look at the second bar, it goes E, F. That second F there, or it's actually the third F in the example, is not F sharp because it's in a new bar. The sharp doesn't carry forward into the next bar. It's only applicable for the bar in which it was written. So any of the notes in the bar where the F sharp is would be would carry over to all of the Fs. But once the bar line has come, when you go into the new bar, any F after that, if you want it to be a sharp, you have to redraw the sharp. So let me name the notes now for you in that example. It starts with F sharp, it goes to G, and it goes back to F sharp because the sharp affects that same note. Then we get the bar line, an E, and then a normal F, not an F sharp. There is one exception to this rule. We have learned about how you can tie notes together to make them longer. So have a look at the example in 2-4. The first note is an F sharp, but the composer has asked that we have a, a note that is worth four beats. Well, in 2-4, you can't represent four beats because it's too long for the bar. So you have to tie it over into the next bar. So the first note is an F sharp. If we apply the rule that we've just learned, the second F, because it's after the bar line, should be an F natural. But because it has that tie in between, it is also considered an F sharp and you don't need to write the F sharp again. So when two notes are tied across the bar line, if the note before the bar line has a sharp you, or a flat, you don't need to rewrite that in the next bar. Then we have something called the natural symbol. And this is a very helpful symbol. When you have a sharp or a flat and you want the note to return just to its normal self, you use the natural symbol. And the natural symbol looks like this, a line and, and a line going across like an L, as though you're writing the word or the capital letter L, and then an upside down L so that it creates a little box in between. It looks almost like the sharp, but without the two parallel lines, okay? If you look at the picture on the, on the um, slide, you'll see what that natural looks like. You draw an L and then an upside down L so that it creates a little box. Now the natural sign cancels out a sharp or a flat. In this particular example, in the bass cliff, the third line is good boys deserve, so it's a D. It has a sharp in front of it, so it's D sharp. The second note is also a D. And if there was no natural sign there, it would automatically be a D sharp, just like we've spoken about in the rule before. But the composer here wants it to be just a normal D. So he puts, or she, puts the natural sign in front of it. So the first note is a D sharp, the second note is just an ordinary D, or D natural, and then the last note is a C. So the natural sign cancels a sharp or a flat. And that's where we end it.